Welcome once again to our special countdown program to the 2024 governorship election in Edo State. We're talking about Road to Edo 2024. One program designed just to help you make sense of all those aspiring to be governor come 2024. As is always the case, not until the primaries are concluded, we can tell who has been given the mandate. So at this level, we want to show them to you, showcase them to you, we want to help them talk to you, engage you, so you can have insight, and maybe foresight, in-depth knowledge about them to help you make your decisions. We're talking to the delegates, party delegates at this juncture. My name is Sonny Duke, of course, your anchor for today. We're most likely going to have an elongated edition of the program because after the first segment, which terminates at about six, we're supposed to have another segment that will feature another governorship aspirant at about six. But we'll see how that pans out. For now, let's meet our guest, who is a member of Labour Party. I'm talking about Professor Sonny Eromoselli. Prof, many thanks for joining us on the program Road to Edo 2024. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be with you. There's so much to say about uh, Professor Sonny Eromoselli, and I'm sure you want to find out. Born in Irua, Eastern Central Local Government Area, Edo State, Professor Sonny Eromoselli, an honorary professor at the Oxford Academy in the UK, is an accomplished thinker, innovator, and entrepreneur with over 20 years of business leadership excellence and experience. A visionary product developer, he possesses a strong background in management, finance, business formation, and operations. Professor Romasale is proven operation strategist, known for his ability to achieve corporate growth objectives by providing strategic direction, diverse perspective, and positive leadership. Professor Romasale holds a master's in business administration a postgraduate degree in theology, bachelor in business administration, and a diploma in computer science. He has earned numerous certificates and awards from prestigious institutions across the world, including the USA, UK, France, Italy, and the UAE, in various engineering and management-related courses. I want to say big thanks to Professor Sanir Masali, Labour Party Governorship aspirant for Edo 2024 for creating the time to be here to ventilate his views, his mission, his vision for Edo State if he gets the opportunity to become the governor of Edo State. And just to add that, Professor Sonny Irmasale is also the president and founder Mudiame International, president and founder Mudiame University located in Eastern Central Local Government area of Edo State. Once again, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for inviting me. Now, looking at your profile, it's quite interesting to see how you've grown over the years to become what you are today and the achievements that you have made. There is no doubt that in all that you have done, you have been touching lives in a very, very strategic manner, in a way that many people even envy you. So why do you want to be governor of Edo State? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good evening, my listeners. Um, like you rightly said, I have done a lot of things for myself. I've done a lot of things for my community. But uh, you will agree with me. Let me even ask you a question. How do you see Edo State today? How do you see, feel about the living standard of the people? How do you view the governance of Edo State? So that is a question for everybody to ponder, and then you can reflect on that. Then that is the reason I'm coming now, because of the people. I see poverty everywhere. I see the gap between the poor. I see poor governance between the people and the government. And uh, haven't survived the poverty. I wasn't raised like others. The life wasn't interesting. 
I faced poverty in early stage of my life. I have to manage, I have to survive, not on the street, but working hard in the farm, doing the minor jobs. My mother fried Kara. From there, I pay my school fees, and that is how I grew. I haven't been able to confront the monster called poverty. Each time I want to relax myself and say, let me enjoy myself, I've made money. But my conscience and my spirit and the promise I have made to God will trouble my heart. So I am not comfortable when I see challenges. And that is why, if you check my history, how I succeeded and the impact I have made in my career in oil and gas, for 45 years, Nigerians were still exporting their testing materials out of the country. You have oil and gas that was the major uh, revenue for our country. The Filipinos, the Chinese, the Indians were the ones doing the jobs. So until I came in to intervene by introducing institutions like laboratory, uh, bringing uh, training centers uh, to train wedding engineers, it wasn't done. So I was able to bridge that gap and I provided a solution. And look at today, the aviation industries were also sending equipment out of the country. They were training NDT personnel out of Nigeria. I said, we are wasting resources. I intervened. Today, Nigeria Force have signed uh, an MOA with me. So today, we are calibrating most of the aircraft tools in my laboratory. I wasn't satisfied. I looked at the institution, the universities. Just go and check. How many universities have ISO certification for our programs? We do not have them. I'm going to check the programs. So I am not satisfied when I see challenges. And that is the reason I am coming out to salvage the situation, the precarious situation that Edo people are facing today, to provide that leadership that will recalibrate and set a template for our people and other states to emulate. As we speak today, every part of the country is lamenting. They are all crying. So that is the gap I want to bridge, and that's what I want to bring about. Uh, how does this, or how is this reflected in your RISE agenda? I mean, Nigerians, uh, those state citizens inclusive, don't want to hear anything about agenda, because in time past, that was a slogan used so eloquently that people are a bit wary of agendas. You talk about RISE agenda in several of your interactions and engagement. What is the RISE agenda about beyond some of the things that you talked about? Thank you very much. If you look at the RISE agenda, <clears throat> it's a comprehensive program that will address what the state is facing currently. And I always try to compare the RISE and the RISE. What is missing in this letter? Because the people are used to rice. The C and the S. The C is consumption, consumption without production. Cons corruption that have consumed our future. Now the S I am putting there is to secure and save our future. That is the difference. And so if you look at the rice, the arrow stand what to rescue and restore the state back to the original plan. Every state have a plan, have a dream. Individuals have a dream. Collectively, adult people have a dream. They want a better environment. Mm. They want to have, they have a secure place. They want to have opportunities to contribute to the governance. They want to be part of government. As we speak today, there is a huge gap. There is no communication between the people and the government. So I want to ensure that we restore that back and the I stand for what? Increase. Increase in human standard living. Now, if you look at the essence of governance, is to improve on people. So the standard of living of our people today is so poor. And if you look at most of the element in uh, SDGs, the Sustainable Developmental Goals that we have today. Number one is what? Poverty. What are the policies to fight poverty in this state? I have not seen anyone. The poverty to reduce hunger in the land, I have not seen it. Where is the policy for 
quality education is not there. Let me shock you. Edo State was the first state to have a university, Ambrosali. Can you tell me today, can you compare Edo State with every other state today? Edo State University, Ambrosali, is not a university today. Go there. There is no development, there is no improvement. So I yeah, want no, to there see are those who will, who will disagree with you on that when you say Edo State University is not a university today because that's the first private, I mean, state owned university that has produced several graduates. And if you've been there, really, in recent times, you'll find some of the impacts made and achievements recorded, even though it may not be where it ought to be. So what do you intend doing differently, uh, in, in spite of what has been laid there as a foundation, if you like? That's what I'm saying. That if Edo State was number one, can you compare Edo State with, with River State University? Can you compare Edo State with other states today, if Edo State was number one. So what I'm going to do is part of my rights agenda, agenda to increase the IGR, to increase the facilities, increase development in the university, ensure that the essence of university is achieved. Now, if you look at the university today, go and check. We can have basic medical programs there today because of infrastructure, because of poor welfare of lecturers. They've all left the school. I built a university around there. If Mujami University wasn't there today, I can tell you it would be difficult for a teacher especially to have space for their uh, nursing programs and basic medical uh, laboratory programs within the uh, Asian environment there. And that is the only university that is within that as is. So what I'm trying to say is the I is to increase the living standard of our people. Mm. That is the I. Okay. Let, let's quickly talk about a bit of politics. Um, when, when you engage people on issues that, issues that relate to politics, I mean, things, about, things like, oh, uh, this is an outsider. This is not a homeboy. This is a technocrat. As a matter of fact, the, the traditional politicians, if you like, are a bit wary of people whom they describe as technocrats like you. And how do you intend to bridge that gap as a challenge on the one, on the one hand? Then secondly, there's been talk about equity, fairness, and justice. And there's been this agitation of moving people or um, microzoning this political arrangement for Edo 2024 to Edo Central. But we hear that arrangement in some quarters has been jettisoned. So in all of these, how do you think you can survive it against the background of the feelings that you are a technocrat, not a core politician? Thank you very much. We have had several politicians in the states. The core politicians, uh, what do you see? For the past 24 years, you've only had Obaseki coming to the show. But you've had core politicians in the past. What can you trace back there? I am different. I am unique. If you look at my antecedent, I am passionate about people. I am passionate about development. I am passionate about my state. So it is not about me. For me, I am made. I have no issue with that. But the people of Edo people are saying we want a change. And they need people like me. Not just about technocrats. I have been involved in community development. And so, it is not about the old politicians and uh, myself being a technocrat. I'm different from Obaseki. I don't want to compare myself with Obaseki. I am people oriented. That is me. You say you're different from Obaseki. So what makes you different from Obaseki? Because Governor Obaseki also came from the business environment, uh, like they would call him a technocrat. And then a technocrat, and you are coming from the business and academic environment. That, that should place you on the same pedestal. So what makes you different, and what are you doing differently? Not at all. The difference is this. If you look at the academic aspect of it, you look at the industry. How do you develop industry? It's through academics. Every world, every location you go today, every country you go, first thing is education. And once you have the right education, you translate that. Business environment, uh, like they would call him a technocrat, and then a technocrat, and you are coming from the business and academic environment. That, 
that should place you on the same pedestal. So what makes you different and what are you doing differently? Not at all. The difference is this. If you look at the academic aspect of it, you look at the industry. How do you develop industry? It's through academics. Every world, every location you go today, every country you go, first thing is education. And once you have the right education, you translate that into what? Development. So that is what I want to bring on board. I have the technical experience and I have the academic experience. Then I want to bridge the gap in governance by putting in place the right policies that will bring about governance and development. In the world today, one of the most challenging times, I must say, because of the state of the global economy, which really is cascading to um, national, subnational government as it were. What's, what's your template for revamping Edo State's economy? Do you have an idea of what the current eternally generated revenue is? And if you do, how do you intend to upscale that when you have the, if you have the opportunity to be in government? Thank you very much. Uh, I don't really have an idea of what they have today. Okay. But uh, I have to be very frank. Uh, if we have a substantial IGR, that should have been able to what, take care of some certain basic needs of our people. Okay. And uh, when the state is borrowing, they are not generating, they are not producing. What do you expect? So there is no production in the state. The government is not doing the normal business. So what I tend to do is to recalibrate the system, which I earlier mentioned, the arrow. The arrow is about what? Restore the state back to original plan. We had a door line before. Where is the door line? That can create a lot of jobs. Look at the entertainment industry. We don't have the facilities. We don't have the infrastructure. The environment is not even decent to bring people in. I slept, I slept in, but I slept in uh, being here. There is no light. So how do you tend to do that? I want to bring back development to the state. I will make sure that we have light, light is restored, and then we have what I call the CGP, community, government, and people, not the PPP. For sustainability, you have to consider the community. If you want to secure the environment, you want to secure the resources, you want to sustain the business in the environment, mm. what you need, you need the people to be part of that business, which is the local content. Go and verify, like I used to, <laughs> say, I used to say, the oil and gas today, if you talk about local content, yeah. I was one of those that was uh, forefront okay. to have a local content policies that would bring about people to contribute in the business. If you look at Edo State people today, how many Edo people are doing business in the state? You see people flying every Friday and Monday, they are jacking out. They are not doing business. The people are not involved. I'm an entrepreneur. I will bring that on board, ensure that we have startups, we have uh, empowerment, which is the E that you have there. We make sure the people are empowered. When the people are empowered, you can generate more money. Okay. Government is not to have money in its purse. The people should have money in their purses. And when they have more money, you tax them. They contribute to the well-being of the state. Right. So I'm going to create businesses that will bring about IGR. Look at Tokbila there. The resources, are, the raw materials are wasting there. What is this government doing there? And we make sure the people participate so that we can retain some revenues in the states. That is what I'm going to do, and that is going to be the difference between my government and the rest. Many thanks for joining us again, Professor S.E. Romoselli. If you just join us, you run to Road to Edo 2024 on independent television. Today on the program, our guest is the Labour Party governorship aspirant, who is also the founder and the president of Mudiame University, as well as Mudiame International Professor Sonny Eromosale, giving us insights into his vision, his mission, and the things that he wants to achieve if he has the opportunity to uh, lead the state come 2024. Now, we, we, we talk um, so elaborately about the rise, the rise agenda, as some of the things that you want to do. Let's talk in terms of specifics. The economy, what are the specifics? Infrastructure, insecurity, and today with the digitalization of everything that we do, we're talking about the digital economy, we're talking about the blue economy. What is your model? What is your blueprint in driving all of these sectors in line with your rise agenda? Thank you. So I would like to revert back to the CGP model, which is community, 
if you look at the roads today, one of the major challenges that is being faced by our people and even the entire Nigeria is the infrastructure. Why should we have dilapidated roads in the country while we have all the raw materials? They say nearness to production was what? Raw materials. If you look at Obila here, we have enough material. Why should we be lacking infrastructure development? So we are going to have a special policy dedicated on infrastructure. We are going to have a special program on manufacturing and production. That will create jobs. We are going to look at each of digital economy. Our boys are superstars. Already I have a program probably I will send to you after now. Each senatorial region, we have a center of excellence for ICT, not just in Benin City. There are people in Esa area, Esa senatorial area, there are people in the northern part of Edo State. We will establish a center of excellence where our children we have a room to participate and bring about innovations. They are all talented. So we're going to use the digital economy to create more jobs for our people and then bring about more revenue to the states. Many thanks again for joining us. Uh, a, a major talking point that has dominated the 2024 in the build up, as it were, is where should the governor come from? That's a decision that the political parties will make as we move to closer to 2024. Our politics is dominated by finance, money, as it were. What is your confidence that you will pick the nomination ticket from Labour Party, I mean, pick the governorship candidate uh, ticket from Labour Party against the background of the fact that money is a vital component of election and politics and governance in Nigeria? Thank you very much. Uh, if you look at the aspirants, they are all qualified, but I'm unique. That is what singled me out. I am very unique among all the aspirants. So what makes you unique? What makes me unique is about what I've been doing for my people. I'm not a stranger in my land. I've been contributing to Edo State. I spent billions to build a university without looking for interest now. How many of my... As, uh, 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 aspirants have done that. Maybe you were building the university because you were anticipating that someday, maybe in 2023, no, 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 you contest never, for the government's election. So at what point did you take that decision? It was by revelation, God asked me to go and help your people. I, I, it's, it's, it's a desire to help my people. Did God say it has to be this year? Did he tell you it has to be this year? This year? Yes. God said, go and help your people. But you'll be helping your people already. In governance, he said, you can make a difference. I can make a difference. That is it. See, my people love me. I'm not talking about zoning. It's about Edo agenda, not Isha agenda. Get all the aspirants, put us side by side, weigh us, and see the antecedent, then you can tell. Who is ready to solve the problem of poverty in Edo State? Is Professor Romo Selle. It is me. I've given scholarship before now. I never knew I'd become a governor. In 2013, there's a program I call Back to School. I did that program. I have competition for sports, students, children, 40 student uh, schools in my place. Go and check, go and verify. It's on record. I built a university. I didn't talk about that. I gave 1,000 scholarship program training for Edo people. I didn't think about that. I gave 250 million two weeks ago. Not because of that. I'm not, that's why I'm not giving rice. The difference between me and them is sharing of rice, wrapper, and all that. That is the difference. I want to have people like Big Gates. I want to raise people like Dangote. I want to raise people like me. I want to raise people like you. Many of the things that you've done over the years, they are localized in your community. No. They're localized in your community. No. Doesn't that make you a regional, local, uh, ethnic, tribal, biased politician or a technocrat as it, as it were? Not at all. I gave a, school, I gave a discount on, my, on, on, a, on a school fees. It's entire those state. The scholarship that was done is entire those state. Not, in fact, I had a program in Lagos, the Port Court. And, Lego, and uh, Abuja, go and verify. It was in station uh, in uh, in Esa alone. Go to like, uh, my organization in Port Harcourt. It's Edo people, irrespective. I like diversity. That's one thing about me. 
So it's not because I am a regional person and I'm an Asian prone, a pan Asian. No, I'm a pan Edo. Go to Lagos, my business, you have Edo people there. All over the world. Go to Ghana, go to Uganda. Anywhere I have Edo person, I will make sure. So if you don't win the primaries, would you accept the outcome? Would you stay with the party, Labour Party? I am going to stay with Labour Party. I am going to win. I'm the preferred candidate. I can tell you. Like my president, who is very brilliant, and I say I'm very intelligent, it's my turn to transform Edo State. I'm the one that have what it takes to turn the narrative in Edo State. I've been a young guys. I know what system is all about. I know what the development is all about. I am the right person. The people know I am the right person. That is not that person. What's the conviction that the people know you are the right person? What was the fact that um, your activities as it relates to 2024 gathered some steam like some few weeks ago or thereabouts? So is it that you were doing some things on the ground? Why did it take you so long? I have been talking with people. I have been consulting with people, the right people. Okay. And I needed to also show my pedigree and show what I have to convince them that, look, this is the challenge of the state. There is poverty in the land. People are dying. I can't, I can't stand that. Every boat that capsized in Mediterranean Sea in Europe today, you will count Edo Percy. If I, go to, if I go to France, if I go to uh, Italy, I go to Germany, I interact with them. Many of them have no papers. They pass through the desert to that place. And they are talking to me. Why can't you go and help? When I said I am coming, they celebrated. They said, ah, is it true or you want to just, to, uh, just want to show? I said, I am going for it. They said, praise God. I know a lot of people. I'll be getting calls. We are seeing you. We will support you. It's not about the money. People are talking about money. Not about money. Obi didn't have money. People loved him because of what? He has the pedigree. He has the character. And people believe he will change the dynamics. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor yeah. Sonny Eramosali. Labour Party governorship aspirant at Do 2024, share with us the key component parts of his rice agenda. Uh, rise agenda. Not rice. Not rice agenda. Yes. Okay, there, there has to be a clear cut distinction. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank if you. we have more time, probably we'd love to uh, talk to you more. But that means you have to pay us more to continue that conversation. But that will be some other time. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. You. I would love to be back again. Okay, certainly. To share with my people what Thank I you. have for them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having me Thank today. Thank you. Well, well that's our package for now on Edo 2024, Road to Edo 2024. We hope you enjoyed it while it lasted. Thank you for staying with us.